Okay. My video commentary. Ed Venninger, Robert Breaker uh, versus uh, Billy Graham and uh, Franklin Graham on Salvation. Um, see if I have um, Franklin Graham's um, gospel message. Frank and Graham, how to get saved. Yes, probably there's nothing on Franklin Graham. But yes, I want to play what this guy, so we'll do that. Right, so what I'm going to do is Ed and, Ed and um, Robert Broker have the gospel c correctly. Good morning. In this video, I want to deal with the gospel and uh, the simplicity of the gospel and what it is, uh, the two, two parts to it. Looking at Romans 3.24 uh, through 26 and uh, say, uh, start with uh, Romans 3.24. Being justified freely by his grace, notice the words freely and grace. They always go together. Grace is always free. There's no cost. Yep. There's nothing you can do for grace. You can't work for it. It's a free gift. Yep. So the, the aspect there that this is going to be free. All you have something, to do is do it's one, not a gift. one condition, which is believe. And that's the only condition, yep. by the way. That uh, that's involved with uh, the word freedom. That's right. Free, uh, and understand uh, you're a sinner. That, uh, it comes by faith. You add anything else to that faith, it's no longer you, you've put your flesh into it and you've added a work. Yep. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption is in a person, and uh, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You have to believe in a person, and uh, you have to believe in what He did for you on the cross, the blood atonement. And you have to believe in Him. So there's That's two right. parts to salvation, uh, and uh, they go together. Whom God had set forth, no, but God the Father now, whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. The propitiation is a satisfaction. The Father was satisfied with what Christ did uh, on the cross with His blood, shedding His blood. And when He when He judged judged Him in our place. Uh, he was satisfied with that judgment, with the penalty that Christ uh, paid uh, with his own blood. So now the Father is satisfied uh, with that payment. And so as a propitiation, he is uh, now free now to forgive us our sins. To declare his righteousness, now he's much still of God the Father, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Now he's talking about the Old Testament. The Old Testament was saved basically on the idea uh, that the, these sins would be forgiven in the future. They were covered in the past. They couldn't be permanent, permanently removed because they hadn't been paid for yet, but they could be covered based on what the, on the, on the, the cross that would happen in the future. Then he goes to the New Testament, verse 26, to declare, I say at this time his righteousness, again, the Father's righteousness, that he, that, uh, he can do this now because of the, uh, the cross, that he might be just, this is, uh, he, this is uh, justification, this is the issue that the Father can now do this because justice has been uh, satisfied, that he might be just and the justifier, that's talking about us now, the unbeliever, who can get the, uh, uh, when we are unbelievers, of the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So the Father now can justly justify the unbeliever when he believes in Jesus Christ, when he believes in the blood atonement, and yep. the unbeliever sees the blood atonement and, and through the scriptures and sees that Jesus Christ, what Christ did for him on the cross, yep. uh, with his uh, death, shedding his blood on the cross, uh, and his burial and resurrection, when he sees that, he believes what he did on the cross, and then he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ for his, uh, for his, uh, for his salvation. They go together. Uh, so the issue comes out, the, uh, what he, Christ did for, for us on the cross, 
you believe in that, you believe in the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us, and you believe in Him for your salvation. There's a two parts to that gospel, two parts of the salvation uh, uh, component to the uh, uh, event. Uh, and the, the, it comes down to the blood atonement, what Christ did, and uh, then believing in Him for what He is, uh, our Savior, that He died in our place. And so those, that's uh, Romans 3.24-26 uh, make, makes it very clear that salvation is, is uh, made up of two parts, uh, believing in that blood atonement, uh, which allows the Father now to, uh, to uh, impute His righteousness to us uh, justly, justify us, uh, because He can justly do it. The sins have been paid for. And then believing in His Son, because that's where redemption is in. It, uh, yeah, the Son is where redemption, uh, the uh, salvation lies in. You believe in a person for your salvation. And so this is a crucial to remember, and this is the, uh, it's freely. This is by grace. There's no works involved. There's nothing else you have to do but believe what the Scriptures say. That Jesus Christ, uh, through His blood, shed blood, paid for your sins on the cross, died, was buried, rose again, and that believing that, then you believe in Him for your salvation. Nothing less, nothing more. That's the gospel. Anybody adds to that, anybody subtracts from that, is preaching a false gospel. Yep. Amen. Thank you. Okay, that's what Ed says. Now we go to the truth about... Hang on. Why, um, Peter B.B. believes in the gospel, but he adds the condition of give your life to Jesus for salvation. Then you are saved when you give your life to Jesus. That's what Peter B.B. in the North Rye Church... That's Steve Malone is there. Yep. Uh, they believe. So they're adding to, to faith. Now, Billy Graham, let's play what they say. In the wake of my video on Friday concerning Billy Graham, I have been asked a very good question. And it concerns... Billy Graham's belief. Now, I have said before that the essential belief of the gospel of the circumcision. Now, if you don't want, if you don't know what I mean by circumcision, there are two gospels in the New Testament: the gospel of the circumcision, which God brought to Israel through Abraham, and the gospel of the uncircumcision. Paul is the head of that. It's a gospel that went to the nations. Two different gospels. Read Galatians 2.7. Paul says that Peter has been entrusted with the gospel of the circumcision according as I have been entrusted with the gospel of the uncircumcision. Two different sets and of we're under belief. under Paul's gospel t today. Yep. The main teaching of the circumcision gospel is that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus yep. is the Christ. Very simple, isn't it? Yep. Not so fast. Because the point was brought up to me, Martin, Billy Graham believes Jesus is the Messiah. Well, let me ask you this. And it's how he died. Does Satan believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? Yep. Yeah, he sure does. Satan believes that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. That's right. And in that respect, Satan is a lot smarter than Christians. Does Satan believe that God is sovereign? Yes, he does. I believe so. So what's the difference then? How can someone... For one thing, am I saying that Satan is going to be in the 1,000-year kingdom because he believes that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel? No. Jesus... Uh, Satan for sure believes in the death of Christ, and again in this, he is smarter than most Christians who don't actually believe that Jesus Christ died. They believe that his body died, but that he didn't. That he did. Because he did they die. think that he is 
God the Father, even though Jesus called himself the Son of God. I'm just trying to believe scripture here. Jesus is the Son. So Satan believes in the death of Christ. Is Satan in the body of Christ? No. Satan believes that Jesus Christ died for sin. That's an essential belief of Paul's teaching. Is Satan then in the body of Christ? Of course I not. I haven't played this guy's But do you know why before. he's not in the body of Christ, even though he believes these essential teachings of both Gospels? The Gospel of the uncircumcision, of course, being that Jesus Christ died for our sin, was entombed, and was raised the third day. It's really quite simple, even though it sounds complicated. It's like, yeah, Billy Graham believes that and Satan believes that. Billy Graham and Satan, they're both in the kingdom. Well, let's take a look at Romans chapter 10. Seems simple, but I need to bring up an important okay, point. All my points 10. are important, by the way. Okay. Paul, Romans 10, verse 1. Indeed, brethren, the delight of my heart and my petition to God for their sake, that is, for the sake of Israel, is for salvation. The desire of my heart, my petition to God for their sake, is for salvation. So as Paul is dictating this, Israel's not saved because the desire of his heart is for them to be saved. So obviously, as he's dictating this, they're not saved. For I am testifying to them that they have a zeal of God. They're all about God. They talk about God. They're excited. They're zealous. The Jews mentioned the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Jews of Jesus' day were zealous for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And yet they killed their own Messiah. How can this be? This is why. For I'm testifying to them they have a zeal of God, but not in accord with recognition. There's a recognition chip missing. Right. For Billy Graham, there's a recognition chip there, but there's also a bigger recognition chip missing. Satan has the recognition chip. It's a small chip. Very, very tiny, uh, but that doesn't matter nowadays. Tiny can be powerful. Let's say it's, it's got really not very many circuits. It's not very powerful. Not in accord with recognition. Let me just let Paul elaborate on this in verse 3. For they, here's the key, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness were not subjected to the righteousness of God. There it is. Yep. The Jews, even though they recognized Abraham, even though they recognized the prophets, they were ignorant of the righteousness of God. And this is Satan's flaw, and it's Billy Graham's flaw. It's Billy Graham. This is what hangs Billy Graham. This is what hangs Satan. Yep. They're ignorant of the righteousness of God, of the goodness of God, of the love of God, of what God does and who God is. You can point and say, that's God. Or you can point over here and say, that's Jesus Christ. But do you know who Jesus Christ is? And there's another verse in 2 Corinthians 11 that's a shocker. I'm going to get to that. Yep. It's God's son. He is love. God. He is righteousness. But they can't recognize God as righteousness. And here's why. The killer is still coming. For they, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own righteousness. There it is. Seeking to establish, to dig in, to prove, to attest to their own righteousness. And this, was, this is a problem with Satan. He wants his own righteousness. Righteousness. He can recognize things. He can say, yeah, Jesus did that. Jesus did that. 
But what stands in the way is this, this rabid, foaming at the mouth need to be someone in your own estimation, in your own estimation, to stand apart from God, to be independently righteous. So whenever one is seeking to establish one's own righteousness, they are not subjected to the righteousness of God. They don't want to be subject. They're in subject. And Satan is in subject. He's in, in subjection to the righteousness of God. Why? Because he's got this other agenda. Same with Billy Graham. That's right. I'm comparing Billy Graham to Satan. And I'm comparing most Christians to Satan. They're seeking to establish something about themselves that is good. And they're doing it apart from God. Apart from God. Apart from the influence of God. Apart from the work of God. There's another name for this. It's a common term. It's called human free will. That's what it's called. Free will is seeking to establish one's own righteousness. Free will is being not subjected to the righteousness of God. You're not going to subject yourself to it. And you can put it in holy terms. You can sanctify it by using theological terms. Lay myself down, yield myself. to. But you're not yielding yourself. If you want to yield yourself, drop the satanic teaching of human free will. Human free will is independence of God and it is a self-seeking righteousness. And because you're busy doing this, you are ignorant of the righteousness of God. Anyone who embraces and forwards the teaching of human free will is ignorant of the righteousness of God. That includes... Satan and Billy Graham and Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. Always like to bring her in there who strained to produce a righteousness that she, in her own mind, could then barter for salvation. That's the Christian message, as I've been saying, and I keep repeating because this is so important. I'm just I'm giving you now a verse, prayer. and I'm giving you the reason now why lip service and Jesus said that of the Pharisees. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There's the thing. Yeah. The heart. Even Satan could honor Jesus with his lips. Yeah, you're the Christ. Yeah, you're the Messiah. Yeah, you died for the sins of the world. You're the sovereign of the universe. It's lip service because your heart is far from him. And any human heart, or a satanic heart for that matter, is far from God, which seeks to establish its own righteousness. Now listen to verse 4. I'm in Romans 10. For Christ, and this is the same one, this, this is the Christ who is the head of the circumcision in his Jew suit, the same Christ that in his glory as a light brighter than the sun is the head of the uncircumcision. For Christ is the consummation of law. Christ is the consummation of law for righteousness to everyone who is believing. There is much more than just saying it, than just recognize it, recognizing it, it being what Christ is, what Christ did, what God is. It's believing it. Satan believes it, but he doesn't believe it. You see the difference? He believes it. He acknowledges it, but he doesn't believe it. Because he may honor God and Christ with his lips, as Jesus said, but the heart is far away from God and from Christ. For Christ is the consummation of law. If you see Christ and if you recognize the righteousness of Christ, then that's the end. That's law. Christ completed the law. So even a Jew who even believes in his or her heart that Jesus Christ is the Messiah of Israel and is not seeking to establish his or her own righteousness, that person will realize that law is consummated, that Jesus Christ fulfilled it. They can't fulfill it anymore. How the heck can a Jew today embrace the circumcision evangel? 
by doing just what I said, embracing it, waiting for it. They can't go to the temple because there is no temple. They can't do the sacrifices because, again, there's no temple. And any good Jew would not be seeking to establish his or her own righteousness. They would recognize in Christ the righteousness of God and say, well, psh, we can't fulfill law, but he did. Exactly. That's not the Christian confession. Let's get away from law for now. We can't do any righteous act that would please God. Therefore, pff, we're undone. There you go. That's saving faith. That's saving faith. It's that simple and that complicated. The reason it's complicated is because Satan himself has put the tripwire of human free will in the way of giving up the pursuit of one's own righteousness. That's a really difficult thing for human beings to do, and Satan knows that. Because he himself is the consummate free willer. Yeah, there's no one righteousness. He's Only the consummate. Jesus. I did this. I will do that. I will raise myself above. And it doesn't have to be overt. It doesn't have to be the pride such as Nebuchadnezzar as he's strolling along his parapet saying, Is this not Babylon the Great which I have built? by the might of my strength and my power and this and that and this and that. Billy Graham and other Christians are of the disposition that as long as they're not overtly boasting, as long as they're not overtly proud, as long as they're not strutting upon their parapets, that they're in good shape. No, 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 they're not in good shape. They're in terrible shape because the pride is within the pride is that knowledge that I established my own righteousness. And the proof of it, I like to talk about proof, is that the law is not consummated for them. They're still saying, obey the laws of God. The law is not consummated for them. And that proves, Romans 10, 1 through 4, that they're not subject to the righteousness of God. If they were, then they would see in Christ the consummation of the law for righteousness to everyone who is believing. But they're blinded. They're blinded to the righteousness of God. In sending his son to the cross to take on sin. You can't take on sin. You can't even believe your way out of sin. The righteousness of God is the wisdom of God in deciding that this is how sin will be eradicated. Christians say, no, 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 this is not how sin's going to be eradicated. Sin's going to be eradicated for me personally when I believe in God. When you Wait, believe in God. Ooh, sounds like you're seeking to establish your own well, righteousness. Believe, and it can be that. It can be and sin. is that subtle it's that little smug feeling that I'm going to heaven, they're going to hell, because I gave my life to Christ. Boom. You're disqualified for both evangels. Yep. Paul's talking about circumcision your life here. To Christ is a false gospel. I, I so agree with you. To establish your own righteousness. That it's will hang the gospel. anybody. That's what I mean. It'll hang somebody straining to get into the Israel gospel, it will hang anyone straining to get into the gospel of the uncircumcision. That's the killer, seeking to establish your own righteousness. You know who puts that into people's hearts? The prince of darkness. Right. Thank you for your video. Right. Okay. Now we'll... Uh... See, uh, Mary's comment about Steve. He seems, uh, Steve Maloney seems to have uh, pride. Very prideful. He thinks he's saved because he gave his life to Christ. That's the problem with Peter Beebe and the North Ride Church. Right? 
Now here's this sin stupid sinner's prayer from Billy Graham. He thinks he's saved because he said a sinner's prayer. I'm against it. The Bible says in spite of our rebellion and rejection, God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son to die for your sins. And when Christ died on that cross, he became guilty of lying. He became guilty of slander. He became guilty of jealousy. He became guilty of the most filthy, dirty sins. Christ took the hell that you and I deserve. Now God said, receive it. Believe in it. Put your trust and your confidence in him and I will forgive your sins and I will guarantee you eternity. Grimy sickening. Right. Robert Breaker, How to Get Saved. 2010, Robert's got the gospel right as well as Ed. Robert Breaker here. I'm a missionary evangelist to the Spanish-speaking people. And today I want to tell you how to be saved and know it and go to heaven. I'll give you a little uh, scripture here on how to go to heaven, how to know you have eternal life and go to heaven. There's a lot of people out there that claim to have the gospel and claim to be able to tell you that they can get you to heaven. But uh, a lot of people that claim to know how to get to heaven doubt whether or not they're even going there. There's a lot of people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, but, you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. Well, you know, the Bible says you can know that you have eternal life. The Bible says that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're on your way to heaven. So what is it you need to know to get to heaven? How, how do you get there? Well, let's start in with the gospel. What is the gospel? I got my Bible here. And I'd like to show you what the gospel is. You know, you hear a lot of talk nowadays about the gospel this, the gospel that. Uh, TV shows, even popular news shows talk about the gospel. But no one defines the gospel. Nobody tells you what the gospel is. I want you to look here with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 1 through 4 because this explains it very well. Here we read, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, wherein you have received, and wherein you stand. So here we're about to re read what the gospel is. By which also ye are saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. If you preach to Mary what I believed in you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all, all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, sins. according to the scriptures. Yep. That he was buried, and that he rose again the third day. day. According, according to, to the, the scriptures. scriptures. So here we see the gospel in the Bible. And the gospel is that Christ died... For our sins was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. Here's a little gospel track that uh, we like to hand out to people that says, and I All love this the I blood did for the gospel. It shows Jesus Christ on the cross. And that pretty much sums it up real well. What did he do? He died on the cross in your place for, for your, your sins. sins. You say, Well, I'm not a sinner. Well, then you just told a lie. Because the Bible tells us that all have sinned we all and come sinners. short of the glory That's of God. Right, Here right. in Romans chapter 3, the Bible tells us no that everyone is a sinner. For, for no heaven. one can deny that they have Only sinned Jesus. in their life. And as a matter and of I fact, in this Jesus. verse right here, verse 24, or excuse me, 23, we read, For all have sinned and come short, short of the, the glory, glory of God. God. And up here in verse 10, it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. Mm -hmm. All have sinned. Everyone in this world today is a sinner. The only person that ever lived without sin was Jesus Christ, the sinless substitute who died on the cross in our place for our sins. Now, what does the Bible say? Since we've sinned, how do we get to heaven? How can we get there? God won't allow any sin into heaven. So how do we get to heaven because we're sinners? What can we do? Well, the Bible tells us that the way to heaven is not through works. You see, every religion on earth... That's right. I'll try to tell you that you get to heaven by some... See, for Billy Graham and anyone who says in the North Rye Church, including um, uh, Steve Malonis and Peter Beebe, uh, uh, saying that give your life to Jesus for salvation, that is a work. So Rob is 100% correct. Something here. you do, whether it's do these rituals or do these rites or pray enough, or try to do good works. But what does the Bible say to be saved? Here's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And in these passages, we read, 
starting verse 8, For by grace are you saved Saved through through faith, faith. and that not of yourselves, it is the gift gift of God, God, not of works, lest any man should should boast. boast. You cannot get to heaven by your good works, because those are good works that were done by a sinner, and God won't accept those works done by a sinner. You can never do good works enough to get to heaven. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift of eternal life from Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 tells us in verse uh, 23, we read these words. 6.23, for the wages of sin is is death, death. but the gift of God God is eternal life life through Jesus Christ Christ, our our Lord. Lord. The wages of sin is death. Death. Every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth is going to die someday. Why do we die? We die because of our sin. sin. We're all sinners. And what happens after death? Well, a lot of people don't like to think about it, but the truth is, according to the scriptures, the word of God, when you die without Jesus Christ and without having your sins forgiven, you go directly to hell hell. to burn for all eternity. That's right. And paying for your sins. in that And that horrible flame, that horrible fire, burning... For all eternity. And what sin is it? It's the sin of not receiving that free gift of Jesus Christ that puts you in hell. You see, Jesus suffered and bled and died on the cross. Who killed Jesus? Why did Jesus die? Did you ever stop to think why he died? Well, we just read that he died for your sins. And the truth of the matter is, the person who killed Jesus was you. Because your sins put him on the cross. He died in your place for your sins. So you're guilty of his death. You're a murderer. You murdered Jesus Christ. Now the question is, what will you do with Jesus? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Will you trust what he's done as sufficient sufficient. as a gift of forgiveness of sins? See, the thing is, for Steve Malonis, Paul Malonis, all those people at North Ray, they accept through faith, but then they're adding Give your life to Jesus for salvation. It's what they did, Jesus plus themselves. So I believe they're unsaved. Rob is right. Jesus Christ. It's your decision what you do with Jesus Christ. Now I'd like to show you some more verses. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the, the scriptures tell us this. And I'm using the King James 1611 authorized version. In 1 Peter 3, 18, we read, For Christ hath also once suffered for sins... The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. So who died for sins? Jesus Jesus. Christ. Who's the just? Jesus. Jesus. Who's the unjust? We are. We are are sinners. We all are. And what was it for? That he might bring us to God. Yep. Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, sins. that we might go to heaven through him and through his sacrifice. Yep. So how do you get to heaven? How do you get saved according to the Bible? Well, the Bible tells us it's by faith. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of it's God, God, not of works, works, lest any man should boast. We've read those those passages. I, I believe so the question Ed, then is, Ed faith and Robert what, have what the do gospel you need to right. trust in to be saved and to have your sins forgiven? They got salvation forgiven? right. Well, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, we'll start don't. In Romans, Steve Malone doesn't. Chapter three and verse twenty-three, where we've just looked about being a sinner. And if you don't think you're a sinner, then I've got bad news for you. You can't be we saved. We all are sinners. Because Jesus came to save sinners, the Bible says. Only but here Jesus in verse 23 we read, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, Being justified freely by His grace, grace. through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. You can have your sins redeemed yep. through Jesus Christ. And verse 25 tells us, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, speaking of Jesus Christ, through faith in His, his blood. blood. To declare his, his righteousness, righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. righteousness. That he, Jesus, might be the just. Yes. The just dying for the for unjust, unjust. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Yes. Where is boasting then? Can we boast and say, well, I'm saved because I did all these good works? No. It is excluded. By what law? of Works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Salvation or justification, forgiveness of sins, is by faith, not by the works of the law. Faith in what? Faith, faith in, in his, his blood. blood. 
Jesus Christ was the blood and faith of in Jesus. He yep. died on the cross of Calvary. And I accept Jesus as my Savior. God demands blood for faith. sin. In the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice Asking uh, lambs. Jesus in your life doesn't say. It's damning so God many said, people to hell. I will forgive sin based upon blood that's been I shed. I hate the sinner's prayer. Behold, Jesus Christ came to this world. And John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. How did he take that sin away? When they put him on that cross and crucified him, he shed every drop of his blood as a forgiveness of sins. And he says anyone who come to him and trust that atonement, trust what he did as sufficient, he will give them eternal life through faith in their blood. If, if faith in his blood, if you will trust his blood, you'll have eternal life. The Bible clearly proves this and proves, teaches this. This is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Look at verse 7 here. It says, speaking of Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his, his blood, blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Forgiveness of sins, all sins, past, present, and future, is only through, through his, his blood. blood. And salvation is by faith, and that faith must be in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yep. Are you saved? The old song says, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? The shed blood of Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. If you will accept Jesus as your Savior today, I trusting in His faith. shed blood as sufficient and I thank him to give you eternal of asking, life, I as sufficient thank him to wash all I your do sins believe. away, as sufficient to get you to heaven, then I've got good news for you. You'll be born again and on your way to heaven. But if you look at that and say, well, yeah, yeah, I've heard that my whole life, and that's no big deal, you're not believing in it. You're believing up here, but not down here. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. It's a heart belief. It's trusting with all that you are that what he did on the cross will give you eternal life and forgiveness of sins. Many people know it up here. They don't believe in it down here. You see, the confession isn't what saves you. It's the belief in the heart. Yep. So if you're not saved and you want to be saved and you don't want to go to hell, why don't you just bow your head and close your eyes and just go to the Lord and tell Him that what you've heard from the Scripture today is true because the Bible says it is. And why don't you say, I, I accept what you've done for me. I yep. rely upon that finished work. I, I rely trust on that finished your blood work, to Lord save Jesus. You see, the prayer isn't what saves you. It's whether or not your faith is in the yeah, shed, shed blood, blood of Jesus Christ. Yep. And the if whole your faith finished is not in that blood, then you're not saved. If your faith is in that blood, then you're on your way to heaven. And you're my faith is in Jesus for salvation. Like Jesus saved. One of these not YouTube me, videos, not my I works. Personally was saved. I can't and save we'll myself. Do do that. But until then, I just want people to know what the Bible teaches about how to be born again. It's not of any work you do. It's not going to church. It's not getting baptized. Yep. It's not performing rituals. It's not repetitious prayers. It's not confessing your sins to anyone. Yep. It's what you do with him. That's and what right. He's done for you. Yep. Jesus said, All this I did for thee. If you can get to heaven by your works, then why did Jesus die? Exactly Have you right. about that? Why did he suffer and bleed and die on the cross of Calvary if it's possible to get to heaven by something you do? If it's what you do, then all he did is in vain. But if it's what he did, then you need to accept by faith trusting in that blood that he shed on the cross that all he did for you was sufficient to give you eternal life only jesus saves salvation is through eternal life through jesus christ if you'd like more information on how to be saved please go to my website rrb3.com find more information you can click into the website and somewhere in there is a place to click on about salvation and the gospel and how to be saved we want to see you on, on your way to heaven we want to see you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life and that you're on your way to heaven. Jesus saves. That's right, Rob. Now we'll... Um, I want to write on the... Uh, say the one hour mark. Okay, let's uh, 
see what, what Rob says here. Jesus Christ preached to them. I no longer believe that. Graham is also quoted in the same article as saying, I believe there are other ways, all right, watch this, of recognizing the existence of God through nature, for instance, and plainly of either of other opportunities, therefore, of saying yes to God. No, no, Mr. Graham, no. There's one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's the Lord There's only Jesus. one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life. Um, there's so much here. Growing more tolerant over time. Here we have Mr. Graham and his words. I am far more tolerant of other kinds of Christians than I once was. My contact with Catholic, Lutheran, and other leaders, people far removed from my own Southern Baptist tradition, has helped me, hopefully, to move in the right direction. I found that my beliefs are essentially the same as those of Orthodox Roman Catholics, for instance. They believe in the virgin birth, and so do I. They believe in the resurrection of Jesus and the coming judgment of God, and so do I. We only differ on some small matters of church tradition. No, no, no. We, we, we differ on the matter of salvation. They yep. believe it's faith that works. Salvation says it's by faith alone. That's right. So many things that this man has changed on that makes you wonder. This is even weird to me. Did you know Billy Graham has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? I love him. I thought that was only reserved for actors from Hollywood. Him. I think it's quite interesting that Billy Graham got his the world seems start to love Billy in a crusade Graham in Los, I think he's Angeles, lost. Los Angeles. That's why. Well, that's where Hollywood is. Check this out. The star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hollywood has been the foundation of the filthy motion picture industry. On October 14, 1989, our local newspaper, the News Herald, carried the following story. The world's best known evangelist tomorrow will have his name and the likeness of an old fashioned radio microphone engraved on the 1900th, uh, what did it say? 19th hundredth star along the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The world's best known evangelist is going to have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know what? I don't want that. I don't want the praise of man. I don't want to be on the same place where all these whores and whoremonger Hollywood actors were. I tell you, if when Robert Breaker dies, and, I, and I'm praying the rapture comes first, but when Robert Rachel Breaker dies, if they start praising Robert Breaker and they put a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, would you do me a favor? Would you go out there with a uh, gigantic sledgehammer and break it up? I would be ashamed as a true Christian to have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame with all those wicked, filthy, ungodly, reprobate people. That would be... I just wouldn't want that. Please do me a favor and break that up. Anyway, Billy Graham wins praise of Catholic. Oakland Bishop Floyd begins chats with Billy Graham. Well, here's a Catholic man. And Billy Graham joined up with the Catholics. It says here, a Jesuit... A Jesuit? A Jesuit priest has published a book in which he commends evangelist Billy Graham for his methods and message, but most especially for his uncompromising ministry of inducing people to make a commitment to Christ. Um, the title of the book is W.F. W.F. Graham's Decisions for Christ to Study on Conversion. So Billy Graham is hooking up with the Catholic Church and getting friends with Jesuits. Have you ever read the Jesuit and Oath? The Catholic Church. Jesuit Oath is evil. Catholic Church is the here. Church of Satan. So that's about it. That's about all I have to say about Billy Graham. Now, there were some things about Billy Graham. When he started in his early ministry, he did go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I've had people email me and say, Brother Breaker, I was watching YouTube and I found an old Billy Graham. And boy, he sounded just like you. He was preaching 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And I say, Praise God. So I see that there were people that did get saved from early Billy Graham, about 1950s, even oh. 40s. But as Billy Graham continued, he began to compromise and change what he used to preach. Somebody told me in 1960s, there was a man named Billy Bright. And Billy Graham and Billy Bright worked together, and they have this gospel track that they came out with. And this gospel track came out, <clears throat> and I think it was called Four Spiritual Laws or something like that. And a lot of people ask the question, where does the sinner's prayer come from? Now, I don't know who started it, but I know it was very very much pushed by Billy Graham, the sinner's yep. prayer. And on the this Bill Bright, there was a prayer called the Sinner's Prayer on the end of that track. I did have a copy of it somewhere, but I don't know where my copy of my tracks are. I couldn't find it. So what I see through Billy Graham's ministry is that he started his ministry by preaching the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 
But as he joined up with these other so-called Christians, which were apostate Christians, he began to tell people, now if you want to get saved, repeat this prayer. So he went from salvation by trying to preach to you and you believing from the heart, because of his compromise, he was only interested in your head. And he told you, now if you want to be saved, now just repeat after me. This is Mr. Billy Graham giving his last message to America. And this is what he says. I want you to listen. He tells you, you want to get saved, repeat these words. Repeat this prayer after me. You tell me if you can get saved. And, and just notice how much good and bad and are I mixed together. Franklin because in a nutshell, that is well. Billy Graham. He took the, the good Franklin and the bad family. and mixed them together. And that, my friend, is called apostasy. Apostasy is falling away from the truth and or mixing it with false. So let's listen to Billy Graham's last message. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. All right, that's salvation. Yay. We trust. We put our trust in Christ. Okay, that's all you had to say. Trust the blood. But he never says trust the blood. He just says trust Christ. Okay, now let's continue. I'm going to ask you to pray this Hate prayer. The blood I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Okay, uh, so now we're going to pray. What if, um, what if I'm a lost person and I don't want to get saved? You ever think of that? Why not tell me if you love, if you Can't want to be saved, Billy come Brian, to Jesus by faith I believe from the heart. Nice Listen to what he said. Hell. Sentence by sentence after me. Pray sentence by sentence after him, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. Good. That's good. And I ask for your forgiveness. Uh-oh. Where in the Bible are we told to ask God to forgive us? Yep. We're told when we trust Trusts the blood atonement, atonement, that's when he forgives, he forgives us. Have you ever thought about asking God to forgive you is basically asking God to die on the cross all over again? He can't and he won't. He only died once. Yep. And he, he died that one time to forgive us. There's one sacrifice That's for right. all. Why would you ask God to forgive you when you receive the forgiveness that God offers by faith? So we got a problem with that part. I believe you've died for my sins. Well, that's good. Yep. I believe you died for my sins. And rose from the dead. Amen. That's part of the gospel. I turn from my sins. Okay, now that sounds almost like works a little bit. At but least, okay, let's keep it. Works. I repent of my sins. Okay, That's what do you works. mean by repent? A lot of people don't define repent. Repent means change your mind or feel sorry for something. Is he saying I feel sorry for my sin? Okay. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I invite you to come into my heart and life. Do you know that those those things aren't in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, now invite right. Jesus to come into your heart. Rob or invite right. Jesus to come into your life. That's not there. That's the bloodless gospel. Yep. No, the Bible says in Galatians that Jesus dwells in our heart by faith. Yep. So the emphasis should be in faith in the blood. Yep. Is there that emphasis there? <laughs> uh, actually, no, because you remember the Billy Graham Association says, uh, Billy Graham does not put emphasis on the blood. Graham believes they were saved by the blood of Christ. However, in this aspect of Christian doctrine, he does not emphasize in his message. Well, then that's not a very good evangelist if he's not emphasizing the blood of Christ. That's right. Hmm. I want to trust and follow you. Listen to what he just said. I, I want, want to you. trust I and follow do. You. I trust Just because you want that Jesus. doesn't mean you're saved. It's when you trust. Yeah. If you think a guy gets saved because he tells God, God, I want to trust you. Thank you. Amen. No, it's when you trust, not the fact that you want to. Yep. That's my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive! So that's Billy Graham's last word and testament on how to be saved. I didn't hear the gospel one time. No. I didn't hear the blood one time. That's right. I heard him say, go to God and tell God that you want to be saved. Whereas, Lord, I trust and receive you as my Savior. I trust in your blood atonement for salvation. Yep. I didn't hear it. What if I said, I want to pay my bills? Are my bills paid because I wanted to pay them? No, not no. until they're paid are they paid. It's not the want that saves you. It's when, when you, you trust, trust from the heart. Yeah. So there are a lot of things about Can't Billy Graham. Billy Graham. I, I believe I've done my best to talk about the man and explain to you who he was. The world worships the man as the greatest evangelist that ever lives. And there's a lot of YouTube videos that I think are quite interesting. Many people are saying that that God told them, and, and I'm very leery of that, very leery of people who say, God told me this or God told me that. No, no, you got to go by the Bible, not by what some guy says. But there are many people all over the Internet saying, 
God told them that that when Billy Graham dies, that will be the sign that Jesus Christ is coming back at the rapture of that year. Well, I hope so. I, I don't know. <laughs> it would be nice. But a lot of people Billy say that Billy Graham was this great Bible. evangelist. He's not that great at all. And if you want to believe that, that's fine. If you want to remember early Billy. But later Billy says hell is not a literal fire. Later Billy says that the three people or groups that he looked at as the greatest enemy of Christ were the three groups that he shacked up with and said he believed in. Later Billy stopped preaching the blood of Christ. Later Billy joined up with the World Council of Churches and later Billy went into apostasy and many Christians look at him and I quote, many fundamentalists still regard Billy Graham as the greatest disappointment in the history of the Christian church. So how do you view Billy Graham? You know, really, it doesn't matter. I told you that I was making this video as an edifying thing. I want to edify. And I think that the life of Billy Graham, the thing that we should get from it, that the edification that we should get from his life is, let's don't compromise. That's right. Let's don't hook up with the heathen in order to try to get the gospel out. And let's don't forget the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's do what he forgot to do. Let's emphasize the blood. Let's tell people that they're saved by the blood of Christ. Let's tell people the gospel. Not just say, hey, I preach the gospel. But let's tell the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel is how that Christ died for our sins. How did he die? He shed his blood for our sins. So take the life of Billy Graham. If you want to enjoy some of his old stuff and look at his old, old, old stuff, you can help yourself. But I see Billy Graham as a man who went out of his way to not say certain things as not to offend people, as he tried to join people together. But we can't join Billy Graham is with Satan. others who don't That's have their I doctrine truly believe. or their foundation right. We can only join together on the doctrine of salvation. And we must believe that it's by grace through faith in the blood of Christ without works. Are you saved? Do you trust the blood? I hope people get saved through this video if they're not. And and listen, I'm not trying to, 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 to beat up a dead man. The guy has passed away. I'm not going to kick him when he's dead. I just wanted to show you his life and show you what other Christians thought about the man. Because all over the news media, the world is praising him. I want you to see what Christians thought of Billy Graham. And then I want you to ask this question. Was he a great man of God? No, he wasn't. Did he truly preach the gospel? No. It's so great. But was he faithful to the very end to do the same? No. I think what I get from the life of Billy Graham personally is I look at the man and it, and it shows me I want to be faithful. I don't want to do what he did and hook up with this crowd. <laughs> I want to be faithful standing for the truth and not falling into apostasy. Yep. And I pray that you will be faithful as well. Well, that's it. That's this message. I hope it's been a blessing again. This was all things that I was given as I traveled around and preached. And I saw so many pastors that said, Brother Breaker, did you know the truth about Billy Graham? Did you know Billy Graham this, Billy Graham that? And they all tried to tell me and warn me about Billy Graham. And I'm so thankful that they did. And so now I want to tell you, and I want to warn you, if, if a man claims to be somebody and the world worships that man <laughs> then we've got to question that man because the world doesn't love God in the Bible the world doesn't care and so we need to see it. true Christians are usually hated and despised by the world yep. and that's what Jesus said if you love me the world will hate you exactly so there's the life of Billy Graham I hope that was a blessing to you thank you for watching I hope I did it in the spirit of love the spirit of meekness I, I, I hope that I, I said it correctly uh, again I, I don't I don't want to attack men. I want to deal with the issue. But in this case, the man is the issue. And the issue is, should we compromise with others? And the answer is, no. never. Never compromise the truth of the gospel to reach the lost. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good. Good. I'm going to go to the uh, hope for... For our times near I want you to know this this is only six signs out of the over 800 signs of the second coming of Christ and every one of them appears to be fulfilled exactly 
exactly as the Bible says. We live in incredible days. Uh, and I got to ask you, are you ready? Do you know that you're going to heaven when you die? Because uh, if you don't, doesn't man, you better get ready, folks. Sadly, and, and, and trust in the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. If you if want to know that you're forgiven, believe in the gospel and the blood of Jesus, to Jesus he's die. going to hell. Listen, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Uh, he's currently sure, unsaved. I'm going to I believe he's right unsaved. Now. Will you bow your heads with me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word is powerful. Your word is true. And even your prophetic word proves that Jesus came the first time. And your word tells us there's no other name under heaven by which we can be forgiven. And Lord, I lift up everybody in here to you right now. And if there's anybody in here that doesn't know you, Lord, I ask that you draw them to you. Or if they're not sure. But they want to go to heaven. They can see what's going on in the world. It makes sense when you look at the Bible. They want to know that they're going to heaven. Listen, if that's you, you're not sure. Maybe you said yes to Jesus one time, but you really didn't mean it. Now you're thinking, man, I want to mean it. Or maybe you've never said yes to Jesus, but you want to be forgiven. Hate the sin if pray. that's you. While your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, go ahead and slip up your hand. I'm going to pray for you tonight before we leave here. God bless you. I see you all the way in the back. I see your hands in the back on the left. Hand there, hand there. This I was see two your hand Sundays right there ago. On the left also. God bless you guys. You want to be, I see your hand over there on the right. God bless you. You want to be forgiven. Anybody else, raise your hand. God bless you. I see your hand up back there, sir. Anybody else, raise your hand high where I can see it. God bless you. I see your hand, ma'am. Father, I lift up these who raise their hands and I pray for your ministry to each of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, listen, hold on a second, all right? This is what Jesus did. Uh, he, he did not come to condemn us, John 3, 17 says, but he came to forgive us of our sins. Um, and when Jesus called anybody to follow him, he called them publicly and openly. So I'm going to do that. I want to know that you're going to heaven, but even more so, Jesus wants you there. Of course Jesus he also does, said but this in Matthew where's the 10, gospel, Tom Hughes? Before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. But he said, if you acknowledge me before men, I will acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. So if you're saying, man, I don't want to deny him anymore, I want to acknowledge him. No he words says, you can save us. Here, I will acknowledge you there. It's about I trusting in what Jesus up, did. Have, saying, have our faith in Jesus, Jesus. I want to know I'm going and to trust heaven. his blood then atonement. Do this, stand up wherever it's all you about are. the gospel. Come on down here and face me, and I'm going to pray for you right now. Come on down. Don't be afraid. Amen. I hate the sinner's prayer wave every fiber of, of my being. I saw several other hands go up and that, listen, don't be afraid. Um, the enemy doesn't want you to make a commitment to Christ. Don't listen to the enemy, listen to the Lord. He wants you to say yes to Jesus. He wants you to say yes to him. You want to know no, you're forgiven. Here. Come on down, join these folks and I'll pray for you before you leave here tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, I'm going to pray for you all that came forward. And uh, listen to this. Uh, this prayer, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's a prayer of asking Christ to forgive you. It's a prayer of repentance. To repent means to turn uh, the other way. It means to make a U-turn. So instead of continuing in sin and continuing in self, you are repenting and you are surrendering to and the Lord's And he's personally against the blood of Jesus, listen, blood of time of Jesus, that, and, you mean and it, he's the against the gospel. You, not only so that's why I believe you, he will help you Pastor to Tom Hughes also. and the 412 Church the are unsaved. Anything right. Listen, with Jesus' help, it will be a remarkable thing. Uh, I know because I know how messed up I was and, and where I am now. Sometimes I'm still a little messed up. That's different. But listen, the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to be forgiven. And if you're willing to pray this and you mean it, he'll forgive you right now. You want to pray this? Amen. While all of you are sitting down, let's stand up and encourage these folks as we pray this. 
You ready to pray? We're going to pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. And I ask that you will forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sin. And I surrender to you as Lord. I thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hate to see you pray. Listen, there's some people standing right by you that want to pray with you and give you a Bible before you leave. Thomas, you going to walk over there or just stay right here? You're going to stay right here? All right. With that, God is good. Jesus. Now I'll find something on Franklin Graham. Believe he's unsaved. Just want to see what they say. works nowhere it says surrender your life to Christ he's a liar Billy Graham's a liar That's uh, copyright 1957. Right. That's it. So 1957. Right. No gospel there. Okay. Thank you.